Like everyone else, George Huber knows money doesn't grow on trees, but ask him where gasoline comes from, and he won't just tell you, he'll show you. To fully understand, you first have to go with George to the local lumber yard in Amherst, Massachusetts. Here he is looking for cellulose. That's the key building block in plant cells. It gives plants their structure. Nature has made this material to have a very strong strength. That's why we can build houses from uh, materials that are made of cellulose. George finds all the cellulose he needs for our demonstration in this pile of discarded wood chips. In this wood is stored energy, and according to George, lots of it. Cellulose is basically stored solar energy that's found in all plant material. George, with the help of the National Science Foundation, is working to unlock the sun's energy that's stored in cellulose, which just happens to be the most common organic compound on Earth. And you also have to look at the abundance of it. We have enough biomass in the U.S. to meet that, that has the energy content of 60% of how much petroleum we use in this country. So it's both cheap and abundant. And as oil becomes less cheap and less abundant, our dependence on it poses dangers, not only to our national security, but to our environmental security as well. Finding an alternative to oil is critical. Which brings us back to George and those wood chips. He's taking them to a lab nearby at the University of Massachusetts. It's in here that George, along with a team of researchers, makes gasoline from wood. Okay, so right here we have uh, some sawdust that we got from Coles Lumber. This is our feed to make uh, green gasoline. Our first step is to put that in, this in the, uh, the hopper. Just pour some uh, sawdust into the hopper. In, in here. And uh, our hopper, uh, there's, there's a screw in here that basically turns around and injects the sawdust into this reactor. And in this reactor is where the sawdust, this reactor is, is very hot, and in this reactor is where the sawdust is converted into green gasoline. Inside, the reactor looks something like this model. Superheated, vaporized wood interacts with a catalyst, a chemical powder George has created. As the vapor passes through the powder, it turns into a gaseous steam with the chemical properties of gasoline. Leaving the reactor, is a gaseous stream that contains our green gasoline. We use a series of these condensers to collect our product. And if we look uh, in one of our condensers, we'll see our, our product that we're making. And right here is our product that we're making, the green gasoline. Green indeed. The production and use of this green gasoline leaves a zero carbon footprint. The CO2 our engines release comes from the plants used to make the fuel. The CO2 is recycled to the plant when the plant regrows. The beauty of green gasoline is you don't need to change the existing infrastructure. We're going to make the same gasoline from biomass that you make from petroleum oil. We can make gasoline, diesel fuel, home heating oil, jet fuel, and chemicals. So anything you can make from crude oil, we, we believe in the next 10 to 20 years you'll be making from biomass. And that can also include biomass that often ends up in landfills, like plant stems, bark, waste wood, even discarded paper. In the future, you're going to see these large switchgrass farms, or you'll see farms that grow the, the, the corn, and that you convert the corn kernels for food, and then the stalks you convert to uh, biofuels. So far, George has created biofuels in lab-scale quantities, just a few ounces at a time. And we need to have all those materials characterized. He's working on creating biofuels on a larger scale, perhaps as much as a few tons a day, and that he hopes will eventually lead to full-scale commercial production. They're going to pull up the gas station and they're going to put green gas in their car and they're not even going to know they're putting green gas in the car. All the changes will be made on the front end at the biorefinery and rather than refining crude oil, we're going to be refining biomass. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.